Hosea chapter 7. Now this is God speaking to Israel and the conduct of Israel. Listen, God is not going to judge without a warning. And I read something today, somebody, you know, why would, why would God send anybody to hell? Well, first of all, God doesn't send you to hell. It's your choice. Second of all, somewhere in your lifetime, you're going to hear the gospel presented. You're going to hear a carol. You're going to hear a hymn. You're going to hear a person preach. You're going to get a scripture. You're going to get something. This is what God's doing to Israel. He's giving them something. He's giving them Hosea. When I would have healed Israel, God's like, I, I, heal, I would heal you. I'm going to take care of you. Then the iniquity of Ephraim, Israel, was discovered. Now, this is not God like, oh, okay, let's see what it's. Oh, I see something now. It's Israel coming to their senses. But they don't care. And the wickedness of Samaria. Now, Samaria is the capital of Israel, as Washington, D.C. is the capital to America. Samaria is recorded in the Bible. I forget who bought it. It was named after the man that bought it and set forth. Jerusalem is the capital of Judah. For they commit falsehood. They lie. They, they cheat. They deceive. They don't do the truth. And the thief cometh in. And the troop of robbers, we talked about that last time, spoileth without. You got within Israel, you got no truth at all. And there's just thieves. And it doesn't have to be a thief, you know, a guy picks up a gun, stick him up. Or a guy comes into your house in the middle of the night. You can have thieves sitting behind a desk wearing a three-piece suit. You can have a thief when you go to the grocery store. When you pick up a package of something you always bought, the price is higher. But the product is smaller. I did that one time when I was working for the grocery store, and a stock and shelves that I was, I believe, it was mushrooms, a can of mushrooms, and oh, how the new carton of mushrooms! Look at the cans, much smaller. And they wanted me to stick those cans in the back, you know, hide them, so we can get rid of the ones we have already, so people wouldn't notice. Well, that's a thief. There ought to have been a big sign. Our product is smaller, but the price is higher. This is, and, and the mode of this today would be why you have small claims court. Why that person sold, why that person sold that car is in court. And they considered not in their heart that I, God, remember their wickedness. God can't forget their wickedness because it has not been confessed. It has not been brought to Jerusalem for the Jews. Jeroboam's priest, Jeroboam's sacrifice, Jeroboam's ways are not the ways of God. Today, there are people whose sins are going to be remembered because they didn't come to Jesus. In the finished work of Jesus, they went to a church. They went to a baptism. They went to science. They went to education. They went to cash. They went everywhere but where God told them to go. Things haven't changed. Now their own doings have, been, have beset them about it surrounds them. 
there behold my face you know why there's so many sins around in America it's not because oh we got the internet we got you know live television satellite of news coverage and we got it ain't that it ain't the World Wide Web we got people running around sinners all have sinned and come short the glory of God they're not coming to Jesus Christ they're doing whatever else besides Jesus Christ and the sin is multiplying and multiplying and multiplying and sin is a cancer that not only destroys your body but it destroys all that are about you and it's a cancer inside of a body my wife had breast cancer and the doctor told me that when she died she buried today that cancer is dead it's gone sin cancer you may die the wages of sin is death but it still goes listen a man fraternizes with the wrong woman and catches a, a sexual disease and it's passed on to a child it happens that man dying that child still has a sexual disease there are children whose parents are gone gone they've died they smoke they drink they cuss they do whatever their parents taught them to do they're dead. Sin, general. You know, adultery, murder, theft. That doesn't die when somebody dies. America's going to get worse because she ain't dealing with her sins like she's supposed to. That's what I'm trying to say. They make the king glad with their wickedness. Well, that's our government today whether you're Democrat or Republican they're legalizing the marijuana they legalize alcohol they legalize tobacco that makes them happy because they get the taxes and the princes that would be our Senate a Republican uh, uh, House of Republicans with their lies listen our government it's known to lie to you I advise you I don't know what year it will be offhand but the next presidential race when the candidates take the platform write down every promise they're going to make to us and that man that gets in the White House, whoever he be, when he serves his four-year term, check what you wrote down with what, what he said. Now, I don't follow politics. I follow the Bible. But I have been told by people I well bound can trust that there's only been one president that has come close to everything he promised. They say Ronald Reagan. But did he fulfill all his promises? No, that's a lie. We got a thing where our, our politicians and used car salesmen are known for liars. There's something wrong with that. And it's partially true they are all adulterers <laughs> a nation surrounded by unfaithful spouses friend it's America and according to what Jesus will say much 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 later on that even if a man looks upon a woman to lust after her in his heart he's committed adultery with her we've got it twice as bad on this side of Calvary this side of Matthew 528 
Because we got a thing called pornography. And you got jails that are filled with people who committed criminal acts. We just had a, a police officer fired for underage illicit photos of children, so they say. Now, I don't know if they had pornography and that kind of back then. I don't know what they had. I know what we have today. We've got the internet. When I was a boy, you would have to get the magazine, and you would have to hide the magazine from mom. And you had to deal with mom when mom found your magazine. Today, you know, you go on your phone, you go to work, you don't know what's happening. You can't trust your children with the computers. Now, as an oven, picture that as people heated. That's a rage by the baker. Now, the illustrations coming up now is you got people who are angry. They're enraged as the fire of an oven. And friend, there's something that's today that we did not have when I grew up as a child, as a teenager, and early in the workforce. I don't know when it happened in my age, but there's a thing called anger management. There are people who have been seriously hurt and maybe even killed because when they drove through the drive-thru, they didn't get soft. They got ferocious because when they go through, they, when they got their french fries, they didn't get a free onion ring. Or their favorite restaurant doesn't have that sauce no more. Or... I've been watching this program all week. You know, you illegally parked your car. You mounted, mounted parking tickets. Because you use it, you rip them up and throw them away. And then they come along, they put a boot on your car, and then they tow your car, and you go to the facility, and you are in a rage. And I love... I don't know, they call it real reality TV, and I don't know how real it is, but I love the video because when you start off in the beginning, that guy will say something, and by the end of that guy's routine, you play back. What he said at the end didn't say what he said in the beginning. Why don't you face the fact you did a boo-boo? The pride. Listen, I, I've got parking tickets, people, and I've got, oh, what do you think you do? Give me. And then, you know what? I look at it. I pay it. It's not their fault. But there's a rage, and there's a rage in America. You don't know that in America, you're going to go to the post office, or you're going to go to the, the, to the store and get some bread, or... You're going to go to this place and get some shoes, or you're going to get a, a frozen dessert. And somebody is enraged at their boss, or their boss is enraged at the employee, or this customer is enraged by what terrible service. You don't know if he's going to pull a government, pop, 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 pop. Who ceases from raising after he has kneaded the dough. So what happened is the baker, he's got to fire up his oven. And he falls asleep. And when he wakes up, that fire is raging. Well, that's the rage, that's the anger of the people. That's America. You got people, you know, in anarchy on the West Coast. You got people who 
You know, BLM and we don't have, we don't have the equal rights. Everybody, yeah, you got the rights, and you're storming in violations of the rights of other people to push your rights. Well, why don't you just go back to Africa and try to do what you're doing here in America? You know it wouldn't happen in Africa. Everybody's angry. And it's getting worse. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. Like your sins. Like your sins. Like your sins. And until you come to blood of Jesus Christ, it ain't going to. You can't go to a priest. That, he ain't going to resolve it. You can't go to a psychiatrist. And he can't do nothing for you. And things are only going to get worse according to the book of Revelation. Until it be leavened. In the day of our king, the princes have made him sick with bottles of wine. What is he doing drinking? I think it's Proverbs 31. I think it's Proverbs 31 or 30. Now, look at Proverbs 31.1. The words of King Lamel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. I'm not going to listen to her. I'm the king of the house. This woman's got good advice. This woman's got advice like Pilate's wife. Okay, look what she said. Verse 4. It's not for kings, all the male. It's not for kings to drink wine, nor princes strong drink. Now, we know Proverbs was written by Solomon, but I don't know when this Proverbs was written. I don't know if it's there by the time we're in Hosea. But that's pretty good advice. What on earth is our leadership, our government forum, doing drinking? You know why Japanese won the attack of Pearl Harbor? Because it was Sunday morning, everybody was cock from getting drunk Saturday night. They weren't in the church house Sunday morning. If they were in the church house on Sunday morning, December 7, 1941, the church bells would have rang and they would have been ready. He stretches out his hand with scorners. Well, it's the score against God, against the prophets. Our government scorns the Bible and has been open. Come on, Donald Trump. Donald Trump said Jesus Christ. Donald Trump said Jesus Christ because that was written into his speech, and he only did it to deceive you Christians. Okay? And they revealed, and you know, you think it's fake news and all that. And I'm only fake to what you please and what you don't please is his attitude with church and all. He doesn't go to church. He doesn't have anything to do with God. He only goes to church when it suits his purpose. And even then, his heart is not in it. For they have made ready their heart like an oven, while they lie in wait. Okay, here we're back to the oven. Their baker sleepeth all night. In the morning it burneth as a flaming fire. I don't know who the baker would be representation unless he's talking about the Levites in Jerusalem. Or their heart. But they are waking up every morning with anger. More. They are all hot as an oven. 
And they have devoured their judges. You know, people, hey, no, you want to be drinking that. Come on. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. You're, listen, I already knew a guy who'd be drunk. By, he'd tell me. I, I knew the guy. He had the first, in the morning, he had a, a cup of coffee. And the whole rest of the day, he'll have beer. Come on, man. They, and then when they go up to him, like Nathan went up to David, thou art the man. Kill him. How dare you say that to me? We come a long way from David. But remember, this ain't David's line either. There are people judging. They're like, okay, you said he was guilty. He should have been innocent. You lost your job. All their kings are fallen. That's yet for Israel, yes. There is not one king in Israel that did right. There is none among them that calleth on me. And that's God. Who are they calling on? Baal, Astrith. Look at look at Jezebel. She had the four hundred and fifty prophets of Baal. When Elijah had them killed for false prophecy, false worship, false God, she said, all right, I'm going to catch you, boy. How serious? That boy took off running. Come on, think about it. He just had 400 men killed, and a woman who was in a, who was a queen told him, your life is dead, and he run. There's something to that. Ephraim, he has mixed himself among the people. So he's Jewish, he's Canaanitish, he's Babylonianish, he's Egyptianish. I know these are not words. The Baptist church today is they're Baptist. They're Romish, Catholic. All the world, come on in, all are welcome. Ephraim is a cake not turned. Now, that's where we get the expression, he's half-baked. And what is that? When they baked the cake back then, you know, you would have to take the cake out, look at it, and turn it to be evenly baked. Ephraim is burnt on one side and raw on the other. Now imagine if that was a wedding cake and you come out to their wedding party and here's their wedding cake burnt and gooey. And that's how God's looking at them. That's disgusting. Strangers, Gentiles, Egyptians, and all the others have devoured his strength. That's what's going to happen to Judah in Jeremiah. God's going to tell the Chaldeans in the, in the Babylon, come on in. Come on. He knoweth it not. Now, I don't know what the attitude of Judah was, but they did not listen to Jeremiah. There are people that, you know, God bless America. You don't even know what that means, and you don't even realize the God that you want to bless America cannot bless you and your sin. We're going to have great revivals in the church. Not with Esther, there he goes again, and not with Tamu. And not with everybody's welcome in this church. I was listening to somebody, we got the greatest church. Well, what is the ratio of the King James Bible to the other modern churches?
gray hairs are here. <laughs> and they're upon him. And he knows that not. They say, uh, I read something the other day, and scientists said something. And what they said was totally wrong to what, I forget what it was, but the comment they are is, here's this statement. And it's always been said. He's like, well, that's not true. Yes, it is true. You're wrong. Scientists are now trying to lie. And the, what the thing is, the gray hair is that you got problems, you got trouble. I mean, every once in a while, you see my beard. I can, I'll tell my daughter, that's you. <laughs> I'm not saying my daughter's rotten or terrible. You know, there have been many times I've been worried about her. Many times I've gotten angry with her. I got two children. I got gray hairs because of that. I spent from my daughter, 2002, my daughter was born. I have spent every single year since 2002 in a hospital. My, my daughter being born, we got, well, everything went well with that. My wife got breast cancer and died in a hospital. My other wife got lung cancer. And died in a hospital. I'm missing three toes, I think. And I had a hole in my foot. Ear infection. And I was just in the hospital last week. And I told my daughter, are we ever going to have one year without a hospital? That's gray hair. Israel, they got all these problems. They have no answers because they're not going to God. They're not doing it. They're going to almighty arches, old mighty cow that can't sell chicken. Those cows are saying, bull, bull. That's what the Catholic Church, the official decree of the Pope is called a bull. I would add a four-letter word to that, but I'll be nice. And the prince of Israel testifies to his faith. They do not return to the Lord their God. Nor seek him for all this. There's your trouble. I don't think America will ever turn to the God of the Bible and Jesus Christ. If they're going to turn to a Jesus Christ, realize that Jesus said there will be other Jesus. Paul said that. Many will come in my... I just read the other day. Something about a man who proclaims to be Jesus resurrected and he was kissing a mirror somewhere. I, I don't know. It's, I read the headlines. I just read it because I saw... Oh, here's another man saying he's Jesus. Come on, even President Biden, a, a Catholic, doesn't even believe his church doctrines of abortion. I'm telling you, I have written every president about their soul with a gospel track from Ronald Reagan. There are three presidents now that never written me back. Obama, Trump, and Biden. Never got one letter back. Bushes. I got something from the Clintons, but... <laughs> Totally way off what the subject was, but the Clintons sent me something. I didn't do anything with Jimmy Carter. I was, you know, told he was a Southern Baptist. I didn't realize what the Southern Baptist was. So, you know, I prayed for his family today, knowing what the Southern Baptists are. The pride of Israel testifies to his face. There's a sin. You got anger. You got the calves. You got adultery, and you got pride. What do I say to that? God bless America. I'm proud to be American. Oh, the red, white, and blue. I say you're a sinner, and you need to repent. I 
I'll tell you where you stand. You got the red, white, blue in the left hand and the King James Bible in the right hand. One of them has to burn. Brother, you tip, I burned that flag. And you know how many Christians will say, I'm not listening to that man no more. You ain't going to burn my Bible. Uh, one thing about the Jehovah's Witnesses, that flag is idolatry. You have rules and laws on what you're supposed to do with that flag, but you don't have no rules and laws what you're supposed to do with the Bible. And I can tell you, I have seen some disgusting things happen with the Bible. I have seen people leave church with the Bible on top of their car go flying off on the road. I have seen a Bible sit in the back seat of the car, not open up to next Sunday. I know a pastor doesn't even bring a Bible to the pulpit. I know a man who taught Sunday school. Oh, there's no absolute authority of the Bible. Sit down and shut up. I can get myself in trouble for saying what I'm saying. I don't care. They do not return to the Lord their God. Look at that again. You want a revival, you got to return back to God, but you cannot be holding hands with God and Satan. Joshua said, hey, go back, go to Joshua. Joshua, boy, 24, I think. You know, we get, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord, but, um, Joshua 24. 20 of 19 and Joshua said unto the people you cannot serve the Lord <laughs> for he's a holy God he is a jealous God we know jealous with the Bible if you got idols and images you can't hold hands with God and hold hands with beer or a flag or an Ascot. Or a football helmet. Or Mickey Mouse ears. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. Go check the law, what the law, what sins God will not forgive you for. Go back and check it. If you will forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, and that, that's a that's a big pull-down list. And he will turn and do you hurt. That's an expression. You know what that hurt is? He's going to put you over his knee. He's going to pull down your pants. And he's going to make you holler. It's all chastening. And consume you. Why consume you? Because you won't listen. After that, he has done you good. God's always done good. And the people said to Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. Did you just hear what Joshua said? You're going to do what, what Joshua said you can't. Well, there's going to be revival in America. You can't have a revival in America. There's revival. Okay? Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve him. All right? We are witnesses. Now therefore put away, said he, Joshua, the strange gods which are among you. The strange gods are right there. You know that tattoo? Well, my tattoo says Jesus Christ. You see Jesus, I got him on the cross between my boobies. You see my prayer beads? You see my Allah mat? You see my special underwear? Whatever it is, there are the gods right there. And incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, the Lord our God we will serve. All right, we'll serve. His voice will we obey. Joshua made a covenant. Joshua wrote the words in the book of the law. Where does it record that they got rid of them? 
Well, maybe God, okay, let me come over here and look up. Uh, I gotta look up. All right, let's see, let's see what God says about it. Genesis 35, 4. Now remember, Joshua, the gods were right there. Joshua was looking at the people, and they, you know, putting their beads and holding their chicken, whatever it is. Their bingo cards. Baptism certificate. Look at Genesis 35, 4. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand right there, and all their earrings, ooh, that's interesting, which were in their ears. Earrings are associated with strange gods. And Jacob hid them under the oak that was in Shechem. Now Jacob said, hey, you see all those gods you got? Yes. Give them up. There you go. Give me that shovel. Joshua said, you see all those gods you got? Yeah. Well, we're going to serve the Lord. Where does it record that they gave up their God? Now you put, you know, listen, I'm going to preach the truth. If you don't like it, that's a stupid, stupid. When was the last time you saw a Baptist church take their gods and bury them? You know, it's been an awful long time. I was saved in 1987. I married my wife in 1991. The reason I say that, it's the same church. And it, it's a carnal church. It's been that long. I'm trying to think, because I could be wrong. I've ever heard from the pulpit, turn off your television and bury it in the backyard. Now, maybe, and I could be wrong. I, I've been wrong many times. I've heard turn off the TV, but I haven't heard get rid of it. Come over to my house. There's no TV. No newspapers. So back to Hosea. Seven. So that's the problem. America and the Baptist churches have got gods. One of the gods is the Baptist Pope. Wait a minute, what, what, what's a Baptist post? We got the greatest preacher. No other like our preacher. He's the best preacher of all. That's a Baptist post. And people don't even check him out. Whatever church you're talking about. Ephraim, verse 11, 7 11. After you just say, you know, they don't seek after God. You know, there are people who go to church Sunday morning and they're not going for God. They're doing a ritual, they're doing a tradition, and they don't even know why they're doing it. And they don't even know the God of the Bible. Ephraim also is like a silly dove without heart. <laughs> I just can picture this dove. To... Now, doves don't have a gallbladder. They have a heart. They called to Egypt. They weren't supposed to go into Egypt. They go to Assyria. But verse 10, they don't go to God. Listen, you can get up and say, God, all you want out of that pulpit. But it's not always a capital G-O-D. It could be a small G-O-D. And at the great white throne judgment, at the judgment seat of Christ, you're going to realize how many gods there were. You're going to realize, quote, unquote, Christians, where they stood and where they stand. When they shall go, to Egypt and Assyria, I will spread my net upon them. I will bring them down as the falls of heaven. 
I will chasten. Remember what we read about that in the correction? There's the chastening. Scripture with scripture. As their congregation has heard. Somebody's preaching about the chastening of the Lord, but somebody's not listening. Woe unto them, for they have fled from me. They ran from God. There are people, and this is all churches, there are people who leave a church because of a message, because of sin, and another church will be all too happy to take them in. That's wrong. Destruction unto them. Because they have transgressed against me, though I have redeemed them, he called them out of Egypt. He brought them out by the Passover lambs. Yet they have spoken lies against me. There's your pulpit. Any religion. I'm going to say it. And you're going to say, oh brother, will he knock it off? If they said on Easter morning, resurrection, Jesus came out of the grave, that's a lie. If they say that Jesus died on Good Friday, came up Sunday morning, that is a lie. If they say December 25th is the birthday of Jesus, that is a lie. A pastor says, oh, I just love you and won't visit you in a hospital, that's a lie. And they have they had not cried unto me with their heart. They come to God with the head, you know, I'm in trouble, I, I got it bad. Uh, uh, boo hoo hoo hoo, oh Lord, help me. And then when help comes, okay, bye Lord. That's the man's working up on the roof. He takes a step and he starts falling off the roof. And he's like, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, help me. And just before he falls over the edge, there's a nail there. And the nail catches him by his britches, and he doesn't fall. He's like, okay, never mind, God, I got it. I'll see you next time when I'm in trouble. Or I'll see you on Easter or Christmas. Okay? When they howled, Upon their beds. Troubles, problems. Oh. They assembled themselves for corn and wine. Food. Drink. That corn. You know what that corn's made? is made into bread. That wine. They go to the mass. But the mass can't help you. And they rebel against me. And you, you, know, you know what the flag of the southerns were? You know, the rebel flag, don't tread on me. That's why you lost. Though I have bound and strengthened their arms, yet do they imagine mischief against me. They're thinking of bad things about God. How are we thinking bad things about Hosea? They return, but not to the Most High. They return back to the calf, to the Jeroboam priest. They are like a deceitful bow, and that bow is like the bow and arrow. Their princes have fall by the sword of the rage, there's the rage, of their tongue. You know, if a king didn't like you then, and he said, kill him, read about Haman. This shall be their derision. In the land of Egypt, you don't belong in Egypt. What are you doing down there?
you're in the wrong place. You could be in the wrong church, and you could say Baptist. You could be in the wrong church. If you are in the wrong church, that, that, that deceitful boat could be the pastor. The associate pastor, somebody in the congregation. And it's hard today because there's not many King James Bible-believing churches anymore. And what few there are, the few that even they're corrupt. Well, you know, no church can be perfect. Yeah, but when your doctrine is messed up, what do you, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? 